There are not two puppies alike. You would have to uh, find out what sort of temperament your puppy is, has got. Uh, some are listening, mostly like human beings. Some are listening to you, some are just excitable, and you've got to understand what, uh, what sort of a puppy you're dealing with right from the beginning. But um, when you get to the, uh, the training uh, in the later stages, uh, you do really want to wait until the dog is listening to you. Uh, that is one of the secrets of dog training is wait till they, uh, or puppy training should I say, uh, when they listen to you. I'll take the puppy out, I'll take him on the lead and we'll take him away, shut the others in and uh, I think we'd best go outside leave, leaving the others in. You won't want them running about all around the place, will you? So I'll just uh, put him on the lead and we'll go out yonder. Stay, stay. Yeah, good lad. It's fairly quiet, there isn't any distractions in any way. You can uh, come down and the puppy does just know this work, but uh, the sheep are away and the other dogs are not here, so he can concentrate on what I'm trying to tell him. And first of all, he's um, a puppy that's he's coming up to six months old. And now is the time that he has to have a little bit of tuition in the way of obedience and to teach him that he has to have learnt to have a lead and a collar on and lead properly. Uh, you've seen that, I've walked along there with him and he walked very well on the lead and uh, I'm teaching him to lie down and to stay and the first thing to do when you're teaching a puppy to lie down, usually when they're, they are very young, uh, they they wriggle about and they don't want to do anything but play and, and that's so you have to be a little firm with them and uh, I'll, I'll try you now and, and teach him to lie down and the, the way to do it is by putting your foot on that lead and telling them to lie down and push them down, lie down and you keep and the moment you lay, lay down that get up and then they think that they've done it themselves. Uh, You've got him here, which he thinks that he can't get up. And after a while, don't keep it too long. Just let him stay there for two or three seconds. And uh, then you allow them up, for which you say, that'll do, that'll do. And you let him get up. Make a fuss of it, good boy. And he's pleased with himself. <clears throat> and he thinks he's done something wonderful by laying down when you tell him. And, uh, and and then it's a, it's a sort of thing that uh, come on stand up you you uh, ready for the next episode which is you walk on so I just say to them walk on walk on 
and you do it over again by saying, lay down and press them down with the foot over and the same thing applies. Once you let a puppy run a mix with the uh, outside world of chasing everything, I have a puppy here now that would like to chase birds, which I'm having to uh, stop it, and uh, that's a little extra. But if I never let it start that, it wouldn't, uh, wouldn't, wouldn't have uh, got into the state that it is now. All these little things come, but you have to have great patience and take time. You let it see sheep or stock or doesn't matter what stock really whether it's a ducks or anything that moves but um, it's still on the line which I call the check cord and uh, you've still got it under check once you've got him uh, lying down the next session is to lie, uh, to stay there. After lying down, he's got to stay there. And uh, I usually walk backwards, keeping it on the line for perhaps 15, 20 yards and walk back to it. I don't uh, call the puppy to me after teaching it to lie down and stay there. I don't want it to come running up to me. I want it to stay there, so I go back keeping it down all the time, even if it means walking back on that line. And he will know then that he's been a good dog, he gets made a fuss of. After you've got the puppy to lie down, stay there, and you walk back, right, you start afresh. You go along, and in the three or four minutes, perhaps five minutes later, you go over the same routine until you get it to perfection. After that's been around on the line and seen and enjoyed itself for the run and seen the stock, you will be able to, in this time, weigh it up what sort of a puppy you've got to train. It's either going to want to get at the stock, show great interest, or it might just look at them and want to go around sniffing around and not to bothering with them at all. So you say, right, well, it's, it's, it's just not the puppy's time yet. Um, it, it won't start usually for six months, some I've had starting off at five months, some quite a bit early. I've had puppies uh, about 12 weeks wanting to round up the ducks. But of course you just keep them away from the stuff like sheep because they can't run fast enough to work them anyway. So you would, uh, you would spoil, you'd spoil a good bred puppy by letting it go in too soon, but you can keep it under command by teaching it what you want it to do and to do it slowly but thoroughly. And uh, at the end, you'll uh, realize that with all your work that you've put in and patience, you will be well rewarded. Once you've got to the, through to the puppy, what you're trying to do, and when it's shown you that it's ready to work on sheep, that is a, a, different, uh, a different kettle of fish altogether because you've not only got the puppy to look at, you've also got to study the sheep and the stock that you're working. And in this, you don't want any old sheep or any, any stock that's going to fly all over the place out of control, you want some well, well dog sheep that uh, are quiet and you only want a very small paddock to start them in. And that comes that uh, with sheep that have been probably lambed and, and a good, good old sock, sock lambs that have, have uh, been handled pretty well, they don't really mind a, a, a dog because dogs that are wild, they upset the sheep. But if you've got well trained dogs, the sheep are quiet 
and you can work them twice as easy and so can the dog and it doesn't put the dog into awkward positions by having to chase all over the place. Uh, I know some trainers like to use an old well-trained dog that lay off uh, to keep the sheep in a little bit of a lump but I would prefer to go into a small paddock where you can get those sheep perhaps up into a corner and you can stand there and you've got everything under control. If you don't want to work sheep, you can have ducks. I use ducks quite often for teaching a young dog these first commands, which is uh, his left and his rights and his walk-ups and so forth, because the ducks are in a small pen and um, they are quite happy. They can have a, a piece of a bit of food in there and a drink of water and they can carry on and your puppy is, is under good command. It makes it so much easier. Uh, you can get quite good results that way. But of course, there isn't everybody that wants to keep a lot of ducks to train a dog on when they've got sheep. So you have to uh, make up your own mind on that one. Stand. Stand. Stand still. Now, what I'm trying to do here is to um, get this uh, young bitch to bring them down to me. And that's what I'm just trying to get the, uh, the dog to do, walk. I walk backwards. Of course, us handlers have all got our own commands, but it's usually, usually the same commands for the lefts and the rights. Away to me and come by. If she's going round right, it's away to me. And if it's coming round left, it's uh, come by like she is now. She's Let's come by. Way to me. Walk on. You get the dog so used to that command and uh, to lay down when they're told. Some will ask the dog to stand still. That's to keep it on its feet. But uh, a lot of the dogs prefer to lay down. Well, if they want to lay down, it doesn't really matter. Uh, as long as they're doing as they're told to uh, stop behind the sheep. Now this is a, a little bit where I teach the puppy to draw uh, to drive. Now I go just a little in front, walking up the fence, keeping that fence on the left because if I want that bitch to come round to um, to her right, which is the right hand of the picture now, uh, she she's got to uh, she's got to come. But of course the natural instinct of that bitch is around the left and get round the other side of me. Uh, so she, she is the other side of the sheep and the other side of me. Well, now, I called her round there, you see, to call her away to the off side. And now she's back on her place, the drive. I'm a little bit in front to let her keep her eye on me. She's doing her job very well just there. She's stopped when I've asked her to because she's getting up too close to her sheep. Just keep her walking up the side of that fence. Now, she's only got the one side to keep them to. That's the idea of having a fence. And now, uh, normally, when training there, you would let them go around quite a long way like that. Then when you get to the top end, you bring the bitch right round to the head of those sheep and go back again so you can give her the command of the other side, which is the come by. She's just waiting for her command. Oh, she split those now. That's what we call a shed if you wanted to cut a few off. You want the dog to come through and hold those sheep.
that you want to get cheap into a into a pen. Now these these few coming out here now, I've um, I've brought brought in for to try another young dog. Um, I'm teaching him to drive, and he's got a lot to learn. He's a very keen, very biddable dog, but um, he still has, as I say, quite a quite a lot to uh, to learn with his lefts and his rights. Um, and he's driving. He's quite good at it when he when he's fetching them to you. He's he's learning, but of course, driving them away is um, is in the opposite direction. And of course, it puzzles uh, puzzles some dogs. They go the wrong the wrong turns. There you are. You see, he looked back at me for a command, and he took it wrong. See, he's wrong. He's wrong now. Then I want him right-handed. Now I've got him right-handed. But mind you, he's not done much of this, so you mustn't. Uh, Mustn't blame the dog. He's learning. The word that you hear uh, called out at the trials and uh, with these dog handlers, if that'll do, is when they want the dog to leave the sheep. A little bit of wind blowing, so the handler there, he's got to just uh, get that across to the dog where he wants it. This is a word of commands coming to these dogs. There's not much whistling. The only whistling that I do when I'm training like this, mostly, is the lie down. And the important thing of when dogs first go to sheep is they have to learn to lie down and stay there when told. I'm going down now to try and get this little dog to uh, to shed, what we call the shed again. And I usually have quite a flock of sheep to get them to come through. There you are, he's come through nicely. That's right, you split those nicely. Take them on. That's it, hold them. That's it, come on, come on. That's the way, put them back up there to the flock. All right, now gather the lot. Put them back together again. Now he's still holding them. Now he's going to put them back with the others. Here is the start. Now I'm going to try this little dog to gather. You'll see him going out to gather those sheep. Now he's to stop. He hasn't def doesn't have to rush into them. He has to stop and have what we call a nice steady lift. That's to bring the sheep on steady. You'll see this at the trials, sheepdog trials. They don't like a dog that goes right around bash, bang into the sheep. Otherwise, that's that's that trial more or less gone west to start with, because that's where to us a trial is won and lost at the top end of the field and have a nice lift. And I think that what you've just seen there is what you would call a good lift. He went to the top of the field, stopped and started walking onto his sheep in a straightforward manner. Now I'm bringing him down to try and put him in that pen. Now the gate is open. Let the sheep see that there's a gate open and there's somewhere to go. Now that dog comes around the back of those. Now here it's where you see man and his dog. The man's doing his part by blocking that end and the dog's down at the bottom end bringing them on. Into the pen. Now the dog should come to that gate and he shouldn't go any further. Stand still there. While the gate is shut, Never forget that little little bit of praise at the end when a dog's done well. <laughs>